with the release of watch was nine this gave us capabilities and new features that we weren't really i wasn't really expecting to have really because it supports every single apple watch that supports watch was nine like the apple watch se apple watch 4 and newer so apple watch 5 6 and 7 which i just started off with the numbers but in addition to that it also gave us access to a new low power mode which is said to be able to allow the Apple Watch, like the Series 8, to last up to 36 hours. Where we're gonna go ahead and test that out and see a side-by-side -side comparison, see how much more additional juice can we squeeze out out of our device with that low power mode enabled. So for this video, I decided to test, test it out because I do have access to two Series 7 Apple Watches, both of which have similar specs. One happens to be the seller version. Aside from that, they're both a 45 millimeter screen display. One is midnight, as you can see right here, and the other one is this cool blue color, Series 7 Apple Watch. Now, if you're unfamiliar with my setup, I use these little, little weird tapping things. It's a little accessory that was available during the time of Pokemon Go. So this will constantly keep the screen awake so it doesn't fall asleep because there's no setting on the Apple Watch that will actually allow you to actually disable the auto sleep capability. So this is the next best method. And I've been using this method for all my videos where I do battery life test comparisons. So if you like to watch that video, it'll be right there in the corner. Just make sure to watch that afterwards. So I make sure both of these Apple Watches have very similar settings enabled. Now I did switch between cameras when I was testing these little time lapse for each Apple Watch. So the first one is on the GoPro. So battery life health, a thing to note, this one is at 100%. Meanwhile, the other Series 7, this is the one I primarily use day to day. This one has a battery life of 91%. So they're about 9% apart from their full capacity, which shouldn't be a problem, right? Especially since we're using low power mode. Well, let's go ahead and test that out. So here, as you can see, it is on the latest firmware update of watchOS 9. Now to enable low power mode, you simply just launch the control center, tap on the little battery life percentage icon right here, and you'll find it right here. And then this will give you a brief summary on what low power mode does. In other words, it just basically will delay some of your notifications. So instead of the Apple Watch checking constantly every few seconds, this one's a couple of minutes apart. And all the internal sensors like the heart rate sensor, accelerometer, gyroscope, all of those will be turned off. So this will also disable like the fall detection or other safety features like the Series 8 will have like the crash detection. By enabling this, you kind of take away those features as well, but you still have access to the main apps and complications that you have installed on your Apple Watch. So for the first test, I was already experiencing some problems as my Series 7 Apple Watch on WatchOS 9 wasn't charging above 96%. So instead of waiting another 30 minutes, I decided to just run the test, make sure both watches were on the same watch face, so it's a fair advantage. And then I just attached those screen clickers and use an external source. I'm using my phone to be the stopwatch. Now with low power mode enabled, I have noticed that it does take away some of the animation on some watch faces like this one, as a fine example which is why I do some things different on the next one, but continuing on. Now the first test, I kind of did messed up. I forgot to disable the notifications and such, so both of them were still connected to Wi-Fi. They were not connected to my phone, but they were still receiving like my daily notifications, like the alarm and such, or if I'm playing something like on YouTube. So just keep this in mind and don't worry, I do it without in the next two more tests. I'm just sharing with you this first clip because the result was kind of shocking. So with this watch face in particular, it was around the four hours and 20 minutes was when the low power mode came on on the Apple Watch on WatchOS 8. Now I did decide to disable it on both of them. So you'll see me come in and turn that off. But it wasn't until the six hours and eight minute mark was when the watch on WatchOS 8 died. In about 20 more minutes, the watch on WatchOS 9 died. So this was an interesting test. So I decided to redo this test, but this time make sure each device is disconnected from Wi-Fi once more, verifying that this watch is on WatchOS 8 and this one is WatchOS 9. I also went ahead and made sure that each of them, both of them are actually on the same battery screen brightness setting. So it's a fair playing field. And that this time airplane mode is enabled on both of them. So there's literally no interference. And wait long enough until both of them are actually at 100%. Now I decided to switch the watch face to one that does a more intense animation to the face one, which was a good call because this allowed us to actually, this allowed me to do the two tests to have a control conclusion during the same day. So making sure both Apple Watches had the disconnected from iPhone icon on above. I proceed the procedure, turn on low power mode on one of them and continued. 
Now this time with that watch face selected, the watch on watch was eight. Got the low power battery life indicator around two hours and 22 minutes. Meanwhile, the watch on watch was nine. Got that message around three hours and 37 minutes. So even on low power mode, you will still get that low, low message warning pop up. But this time I decided not to dismiss it like I did previously. And the thing that I noticed, this new low power mode message actually does continue to update the battery life percentage right there above the screen. I thought that was really interesting. Now, unfortunately, the phone that was used to record this time lapse connected to my vehicle's CarPlay, so it ended the recording. But something tells me, based from the next test, which you'll see in just a little bit, it died around the four hours and 30 minutes. Meanwhile, the watch on watchOS 9 still continued on until four hours and 52 minutes. So yes, there is something here with watchOS 9 and it's low power mode. It's really efficient. Now, this time, I decided to run the same test but have an identical Series 7 Apple Watch against another identical Series 7 Apple Watch as both of these actually have a battery health capacity at 100%. So this is a fair playing field. So same drill, same settings, make sure they're disconnected from my iPhone as well as Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, there's no interference, same screen brightness and everything. And yes, both of these are indeed that blue color and they both are the 45 millimeter. Ran this test again, once more, the watch on watch was eight, got the low power message around two hours and 30 minutes. Meanwhile, the watch was nine watch was the brown band outlived the watch was nine because it still haven't yet received the message and it made it to four hours and 30 minutes. It wasn't until an hour later, four hours and 40 minutes was when we finally received the low power message for the watch was nine watch. Just unfortunately my schedule alarm that I have across all my other Apple watches did came on, but moments after it actually died. It looks like around six hours and 33 minutes. So since these results were consistent, it's clear to say that yes, low power mode actually does make a big difference and does allow our Apple watch to actually last a little bit longer when you're trying to squeeze out as much juice as possible, but it all makes sense because once more, it turns off basically everything. This also includes always on display if your Apple watch has that. Other than that, watchOS 9 has been solid and it's pretty impressive seeing that we could actually squeeze out more juice out of our Apple Watch under a single charge, giving us more screen time when needed. I'm definitely looking forward to testing this out one more time, but this time on the Series 8 to see how close can we get to the 30 hour mark under a single charge. I'm also excited to test out the Apple Watch Ultra as well. So make sure you are subscribed because I plan on making a battery life comparison against every single generation Apple Watch ever existed against one another. So we have a general comparison, an idea, if it's worth for us to upgrade or not, or if it comes out to be something very impressive, I really wanna test out the Ultra. Aside from that, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, you know what to do. Greatly appreciate if you guys leave this video a like as those help me out a lot and get subscribed, especially if you enjoy a lot of tech videos just like this. If you'd like to watch more, check out this video over here as I cover every hidden feature, some cool tips and tricks you can do on your brand new iPhone for iOS 16. And then that video over there, that is just a video YouTube's recommending specifically for you. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.